I've been journaling for over 10 years of my life. I'm not sure even when I started because I'm not sure when I classify it as journaling because I was so young when I started doing it. But I can say one thing for sure, it has changed my life for the better. I often get asked this question, how do I start journaling? I often get this piece of advice from, you know, YouTubers and, you know, productivity gurus and people who, you know, praise, sing the praises of journaling, but how do I get started? What do I write about? Is there a way that you do it that's helped you in your life because you seem to have journaled a long time in your life? So in today's video, I want to answer that question in very easy steps. I'm going to go through my process in journaling and what might help you in your life because the typical advice that people give isn't always suited to everybody that journals. So today I'm going to break it down and give you some advice that I've had helped me in my life. Journaling is a bit of a confusing thing. It's basically a format of thinking to yourself, right? So let's write this down. And there's different ways of doing that. The concept is you take the thoughts from your brain. So this is your, your head, right? And you have your brain. And to have a thought, right, is kind of like a smell, right? You can't really capture it. You can't really say what it is. It's just kind of this like vague, nebulous cloud of a thing right? Having a thought in your head is like that. But then speaking it out, right, is one way of doing it. It's one way of like tying it down to a concrete kind of like weight, right? Speaking is one way to do that. Writing is another way, right? These are just ways of anchoring something down to a solid idea, right? To have it down on a piece of paper, for example, right? You can look at that piece of paper and your ideas on that piece of paper, right? It might seem crystal clear in your mind. Oh my goodness, that idea I had, it's amazing, it's great. But have you ever had that kind of time in your life where you write down an idea or maybe you have an idea in your head and you tell someone, you speak it out loud, like Pac-Man here, and the idea seems to kind of flop. You're like, oh, that doesn't sound as great as it sounded in my head, right? When you speak it out. So this is kind of like a way of testing the ideas in your head and looking at them from a, a different perspective so that you can actually understand what's going on in your mind, right? Actually tangibly anchor it down to something real, something solid, right? And so how do we do that, right? Now, journaling is just one way to do that, right? And journaling, in my mind, encapsulates a lot of different ideas, right? a lot of different methods of doing this kind of act of anchoring something down to reality, something down to kind of like something that you can observe and look at, look back upon and, you know, see what you did or see what the idea sounds like or what it looks like on a piece of paper or what it, you know, seems like in a speech, whatever, right? I think you can see where I'm going here. There's different methods to this. So let's writing it out pen and paper as you saw with my my old leather bound journals and like you know pens you can use I even like bought like some nice pens to kind of write down my ideas because I journal so much and that's part of the process right but writing like with a pen and a piece of paper it's kind of old school right people don't really do it anymore like especially with like gen z gen alpha I reckon a lot of you guys don't ever need to write things down because typing is such a prevalent thing that we do in today's society. And to be honest with you, I think you can get away in life without having to type at all, right? So typing for me is one of the better ways to get into journaling. I know that a lot of people like to sing the praises of writing because the kind of physical process of writing builds a better connection in your brain, right? That's what the, the studies say about it. Here's the thing, right? In my experience, right, N equals one study, I've done both. I've done a lot of writing. As you can see, like I filled out those like big, thick leather journals and I've typed a lot as well. In fact, I think my typing has far outpaced my writing at this point, right? And so I've tried both and I could I could observe whether the connection was better with typing or the connection was better with, with writing or whatever. And for me, not much of a big difference. Not a big difference. 
Okay, so if you're worried about that, if you're worried if the benefits, sorry, difference, <laughs> if I can spell correctly, if you're worried about the benefits of writing down with a pen and paper and typing, for me, it's not made that much of a big difference, right? So I'd recommend going for typing if that's what you want to do or writing if that's what you want to do. And you can do both. No one's to say that you have to choose between these two, right? You can type or you can write. It just so happens in my life that I type a lot, right? So if I had to write something down, I'd, I'd grab a piece of paper and like write something down on a piece of paper, right? Like my notes for this video, right? That's the second way, right? And it's a lot easier to get into. The thing I use today for typing is a, an app called Notion. And on there, you can like build a, a kind of a notepad, basically a notepad of pages and things like that. It's quite simple. You can go on YouTube and kind of search up the tutorials for that. It's not too complicated. I know like it sounds like a, a really weird program and application. It's basically like Word, Microsoft Word, right? But a little bit more organized. That's how it is. And maybe more kind of a... Uh, how do you call this? The UI is nicer. It's, it's kind of like nice to use. That's what Notion is, basically. Let's scroll down a bit. The third way I have of using journaling is... Let me look at my notes. Voice notes. Okay. This also, I believe, is another antiquated... So basically an old piece of technology that people don't really use anymore. People used to have old like like cassette recorders with the buttons on the top. I don't know if any of you even know what I'm talking about with this, where you would like hit record and hit like stop and then you'd have like a, a tape kind of going in there and it just, I don't know if you guys know what that is, but this was something that people used to use to record their thoughts, right? They had a dedicated actual piece of technology to do this. Like, like some kind of microphone, basically, right? And the thing is today, we do have that. We have an app on our phones, like most phones have an app that is a, a voice note app. But how many of us go through all those different files of like, you know, okay, file one, file two of like the voice recordings. Not many of us go through that kind of stuff, right? Whereas if we have a journal, it's easy to flick through. Or if we have like an online Notion uh, thing, right? So if it's a, what do you call it? It's digital, right? Digital Notion document, we can flick through that because it's like something that people use every day, right? But with a voice note app, it's a bit, I don't know, how the, like esoteric, I guess, is the word. Like people don't really go into it to kind of like, you know, okay, let's explore my, what I talked about before in my journal, right? But up to you, right? That's just my perception of things. I could never see myself using a voice note app. I've tried in the past. It never worked for me. But for you, it could be different, right? So go for that. Go for that if you, if you think that might work for you. The fourth way is probably my favorite way of journaling. And this is, might seem a bit cringe, okay? So bear with me before you dismiss this and skip this part of the video, right? Vlogging, okay? This is not vlogging in the traditional sense of, you know, Casey Neistat kind of like walking around, carrying a camera to his face and like recording his whole life, right? It's not that kind of thing. You don't have to walk around with a camera like a massive, like, you know, you kind of look like a bit of a dickhead doing this kind of thing. It's not that. It's literally for me, it involves a camera. In me, in, <laughs> in me life, in my life, it's like me in a car, right? It's going to draw a very crude representation of a car. And I put the phone down in like the uh, the typical phone holder place in a car. And I'm just sat down, just talking about whatever I want to talk about, right? I talk about life. I literally talk about anything whenever I'm driving anywhere. I usually record something to my phone, right? And that doesn't go anywhere, right? It's just for me, privately. I get to think through what my thoughts are and what, you know, whatever I'm thinking about. I'll come to what to talk about in a bit, but for me, I record these and I put them on like a, a private YouTube channel. Because I know the concern with that is like you have, you end up with like a, a large amount of files that are like very big kind of files that take up space on your phone. So where do you put those? You can put those on a private YouTube channel and no one has to see them. Right, that's an important part of this. No one sees 
what you write down. Because if, if you expect someone to be able to read it, then you filter your thoughts a little bit. And that's a key part of the process that you need to have is unfiltered thought in your journals, okay? The filter is a bit of a barrier for you to kind of really express what you're really thinking, right? So for me, this is excellent. It's really easy, it requires no effort, right? And it might, okay, the only barrier for this is the feeling of it being awkward, right? That's the only barrier for this. And it works for me because, well, as you can tell, I'm on YouTube and I, make, I like making videos and it's just my kind of thing, right? And it very quickly becomes like normal as you get used to doing this. Like I remember recording my first video, uh, YouTube videos and they were awkward, but it very quickly after like maybe a week, it became normal. And now it's always normal. So go through that one week period or it might even be less for you where it seems awkward, but then it becomes normal. If you get past that period of time, then it's such a useful thing to do because you don't have to do anything, right? You don't have to get out a book or a pen or like a table even. Literally, find a space where it's just quiet, get your phone out, press record, start talking, right? And talking, the reason why I like talking is because talking is so much faster then typing, I'll just write it like this, typing, which in turn is faster than writing. And each might have their benefits. I'm not saying that, you know, they're rubbish because they're not fast enough, but talking is so superior because we can talk at the speed that we think, right? Which is why teaching like this, like teaching on a video, and I've, I've not planned this thoroughly, Communication is best when you're speaking at the rate of which you're talking. Sorry, you're speaking at the rate of which you're thinking, right? So I'm thinking this through as I'm telling it to you. And so it's received in a better way. And trust me, I've been teaching for a very, very long time. And so I know this to be a fact, right? If I whiz through something, if I planned this whole thing through and whiz through all the, the techniques and the ways to do it, then it wouldn't really sink in. It wouldn't really connect with you on a, a deeper level, right? So talking is like a very authentic way to get a message across and a very easy way to do things. It doesn't require any equipment, doesn't require any kind of setup. It's very simple, just set your phone down, just talk, right? That simple. So beyond this, let me see what I have to say. Okay, let's get into why we journal, right? Why is it a thing that people recommend? Why is it something that I recommend? Because honestly, as I said at the start, it has changed my life. How has it changed my life? We'll get into that. It's changed things like thoughts about philosophy, like my life philosophy, like literally the way that I see life and the way that I think about what's right and wrong, that has changed through journaling. Even thoughts about religion, right? You might change how you think about your religion, or maybe you might adopt a religion because of what you think about while journaling, right? And that's a key word there, thinking. As I talked about before, journaling is just thinking out loud. That's what it is, right? And so it's a way for you to kind of develop your ab uh, ability to talk. Ability? Ability to, to talk. Sorry, no. It's about developing your ability to think, right? Critical thinking. I hear Jordan Peterson talk, talk about this a lot, where he says the most important skill in life is critical thinking. And the only way to develop that is through writing, right? And I agree, but I also think it's through speech and through voice notes and through video and through expressing yourself in any kind of concrete form in any way that you can watch it back or look at it back, any kind of concrete form of thinking is great. Because of course you can just sit there like on the toilet seat and just think about things, right? And it doesn't go anywhere. But if you write it down in a concrete fashion, if you write it down on your phone, your laptop, whatever, it doesn't matter what the device is, it's concretized or like solidified in a thought, 
in a piece of paper, in a, a document on your phone, a document on your laptop, right? And so for me, the way that this looks like is typically it helps me to solve problems in my life, right? And we'll come to the philosophy and religion part soon because it's a scale, right? So for me, I'll explain all this in a second. It will come together. Whenever I have a problem, right, I always know that journaling will help out with that. So I'm like worried about something. Maybe there's, I don't have enough clients in my business. Maybe there's something wrong with the way my relationship is with a, a friend of mine or whatever. So I'm having a problem and I journal about it, right? So I write down certain things. Okay, this I'm not happy about and this is why and you know, maybe there's this I can do about it. Maybe there's a solution here, solution A, solution B. And, you know, there's pros and cons to each of these solutions. And so I can write that down and kind of talk about those and, you know, note things down in a way that's kind of like, it kind of looks like an essay, right? And I know that seems really boring for me to tell you that it's like an essay, but it's a really fun way to kind of break things down and be able to critically think about what you're doing in life, right? And so you come to a conclusion, right? The conclusion is, okay, solution B is the best way to go about it because it has the most pros and the least cons and it turns out to be the best for this friend and that friend and maybe it's just the best overall and I feel great about doing it, right? It's a way of assessing your life as well because what philosophy even is, is knowing the difference between right and wrong and choosing the right one, right? right and wrong. And so the scale of these problems can be big or small, right? You can go to like, okay, there's like some nitpicky thing I, I want to change about like the dessert I had for dinner, right? Some like food thought, right? And then there's like really big things like, okay, what, what am I going to do in terms of the way that I believe about life? Like let's say religion, right? So you might have some epiphany about like, okay, I grew up a Christian, but I never believed in it, but there's something that happened in my life that makes me want to believe again. And that really changes how you kind of look at life. And maybe you want to look at like what kind of person you want to marry and things like that. And in fact, I have a story about journaling for a very long period of time about waiting till marriage, right? And it's kind of linked to my religious background and I made a choice through journaling to wait for marriage. That's how big this kind of thing can become. Like the really big thoughts in life can be solved and kind of come to through journaling, right? As well as the small thoughts and everything in between, right? Medium thoughts, whatever. It's a really good way to solve problems in your life in a very easy and quick way, right? Because sometimes just thinking in our heads is kind of like we aren't able to kind of look at a piece of paper and determine what is going on right things bounce around in our head and it kind of it confuses us it's not a very effective way of thinking about a thought right we just kind of confuse ourselves and kind of like oh this is too complicated i give up i choose this and we kind of default to an answer Right, And that's not good if we just default to an answer. If we think things through and arrive at a conclusion that we're happy with, life becomes a lot clearer. Okay, And that's part of it. Clarity. What exactly are you being clear about? So we've talked about philosophy, religion, your values. Right, These are like big pillar things. The things that you really, really care about in life, the things that are the most important in life, your philosophy, your values, the way you live your life, your values, your mission in life. What are you going to do with your life? <laughs> Spelled mission with three S's. <laughs> well done, Dylan. Your mission, your interests in life. What are you going to pursue? You only have a finite time on this planet. What are you going to do with that time? Are you going to spend it doing a martial art? Or are you going to do it, spend dancing, being a musician, being a teacher? There's only so much you can do in life, right? 
Okay, sorry, I've got a bit of a sniffly nose today. So, what were we talking about? Values, mission, interests, religion, philosophy. These arise through solving problems, right? So the more problems you solve, problems, the more you solve, right? So you solve problem number one, number two, number three, and the more you solve, you get to arrive at a conclusion about what your values are overall, right? So if you realize a pattern in the way that you solve problems, you might realize, oh, I have these certain values, right? And that kind of, it kind of feeds into each other, right? So your values are like kind of part of your religion and religion is part of your philosophy and your mission feeds into your values and your values feed into your mission. It's all connected to each other, right? All these big pillars in life, you can't really separate them. It's how you live life. It's the most important thing, the most important thing in life. And that's how I can say, like I said at the start of this video, journaling has changed my life. No exaggeration. Through solving these problems and through kind of talking to myself about something to go through, right? It does that kind of thing. And problems is just one way to look at it, right? Kind of going to a place where you're like, okay, I need to solve this problem, et cetera, et cetera. But there's other things you can do, right? So I want to kind of go through this in a certain way, but I'm thinking about what to start with. So if you're not going through a problem, how do you start? I'll just address that question first. How to start? Because that's probably the most common question I get about journaling. Like, how do I start journaling? And if you're not going through a problem, then what do you what do you do, right? So what I've talked about so far is like problems in your life, right? But if you're not going through that kind of thing, then what do you do, right? So for me, I like to write about whatever I want to write about. Okay. Let's just write this. Want to write. Because that tends to overlap a lot with what's important in life. Right? So what you want to write about might include, you know, some t uh, some kind of like, uh, how do you say this? irrelevant topic so maybe it's something like you know you want to talk about your pokemon cards you want to talk about the i don't know the material of your guitar strings or whatever right whatever you want to write about so it, it might be irrelevant to your life but most likely it will be important right it ends up being that way like it ends up kind of filtering down to that kind of level and so you can picture it like this the venn diagrams of what you want to write and what's important to you has a very very big overlap in the middle right so what i tell people is write whatever you want to write because you will end up writing something that is important to you and that is what matters right because when people get the advice of write something that's important to you then people get in their heads and they think okay what's like a really important thing that i can write about and they stop and they stare at a blank piece of paper and they think okay i've got a really really kind of like start this in the best way okay and they stare and they get they get their pen ready and they want to write something down and they can't start because it's so much pressure because they've been told to write something important but instead just write whatever you want talk about butterflies talk about your guitar pick your 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 beard brush whatever you want to talk about just talk about that and it will eventually flow into something that is eventually important, okay? But start that tap flowing because staring at a blank piece of paper is the worst thing, right? You, you, you're demotivated, you can't wait to like, you're kind of really stuck in that moment of kind of like lack of momentum. Once you get that ball swinging, you have momentum. And momentum is what makes things easier, right? Because at the beginning, it's always going to be hard. But once you get that pendulum swing in, it can really go. It doesn't take much to keep it going, right? So imagine like uh, push starting a car. I don't know if people even do that these days because most cars are electric, right? So you have a car and sometimes the engine or the battery fails. And so you, you end up having to like get outside of the car and like kind of push it forward, 
right, by the door frame, right? At the start, it's quite hard, but as you get it rolling down the road, it becomes easy. Because even though the car weighs like tons, once it's moving, it becomes easier. That's the point I wanna make there, right? And it's kind of similar to like a tap, right? In this way that you're afraid of writing something down, but you just gotta open the tap and kind of let that flow, right? Because at the start, when you first install a tap, for example, and the plumber's like, you know, you gotta let it run for a bit before you actually drink from this tap. Because during the construction, there's all kind of bits of like, you know, dirt in there, and the first bit of water that comes out is going to be filled with like kind of bits of like, you know, debris and things like this and dirt. But as you continue to use that tap, then it will start to become clear, right? And you can start to drink from that water, right? And so to gain that clarity that I talked about above, you just got to open the tap and let it flow and let your thoughts, you know, there's going to be some like, you know, less quality, you might think, oh, I'm writing so bad right now, but that's fine, embrace it, right? Eventually it will become good quality and that's only a function of keeping the tap open. Keep writing. <laughs> to write good, you have to go through the bad phase. It's like with anything. To become good at basketball, you have to keep playing basketball badly until you get good, right? There's no kind of like... <laughs> You don't just become good by starting, right? There's a, a quote I have on my wall. Sucking at something is a first step to becoming good at something. That's an allegory for life in general, right? Life is like that. So spend time doing the thing and you'll get good at the thing. So I think I've been on a tangent for a bit here. What are we talking about? So some ideas to start you off here. So what did I talk about before? I've already talked about writing what you want to write about, right? But even then, I know some of you might be still staring at that piece of paper thinking, okay, what on earth do I write about? So here are some ideas of what has helped me write in the past. So gratitude. I'm sure you've heard about this before. If, you've, if you're in this space of uh, self-improvement, especially if you're watching a long video like this, Gratitude is a very common thing that people recommend. It's where you basically write down three things that you're grateful for every single day. So you might be grateful for your dad because he works all day and he provides for the family and he's like very loving and he brings you toys and gifts and things like this and he's a great guy. You might be grateful for that. It's sunny today, right? Because it's rarely sunny in England and it's, you know, sunny for once in, in the year, right? <laughs> And you might be grateful for the fact that you have a roof over your head, right? You live in a first world country. Well, I'm, I'll apply it to me. I live in a first world country and I'm very lucky to be here. I've got access to technology, the internet, this infrastructure that has, you know, given me an education that I, you know, that I can use to bring value to other people in life, right? And so I'm grateful for those things. And I can talk about that, video, writing, typing, whatever, right? Like I talked about before, all these apply. So that's gratitude. Write down three things that you're grateful for every day. And people are like, oh, can I write down the same thing as yesterday? Try and be a bit more imaginative. Try and think of three new things, right? It doesn't have to be so strict, like you can never write the same thing ever again. Just try and think of whatever you're actually grateful for that day and try and think of new things, okay? So gratitude, that's one thing. The next thing, wishing well. I keep switching from lowercase to uppercase. <laughs> wishing well. What does that mean? Not a wishing well as in like the hole in the ground that you kind of toss a coin into and hope for your wishes to come true. Not that kind of thing, right? Wishing well as in like, I wish that person well, right? So a friend of mine, maybe he's unemployed and so I hope he gets a job soon because that will make him happy in life, right? I wish that it would happen for him right? Maybe my, my grandma is ill and she's in hospital and so I hope she gets better soon, right? Because um, I want to wish well upon her. And you like, if you genuinely want that to happen, right? And wishing well upon, you know, whether something good happens in your life as well, 
right? I hope I'm able to help someone else in this way. I hope I'm able to kind of be a good person, whatever you want to kind of think about in that way. Wishing well, usually upon others, upon the external world, upon, you know, whatever you want to imagine is good for the planet, right? For the planet, for the people, for the, for the animals, whatever you want to kind of, whatever you care about is coming under this kind of category, right? Wishing well. The next part, setting goals. Setting goals. So this is what I kind of alluded to in the last point, right? So kind of saying, okay, I have this goal of reaching, you know, this many <laughs> profit in a business or something like that. So that might seem kind of shallow. Maybe something like I have a goal of helping people in the world. So maybe you might set a goal for that and maybe I wanna I wanna help a hundred people by you know this certain date, right? Right? I want to kind of get better at playing guitar. I want to get better at doing salsa. I want to get better at my social skills. I want to get better at my diet and exercise. I want to get better in the gym. Whatever it is, you can think of it and you can write down these kind of goals, right? Any kind of goal, it doesn't really matter what, but you can list it down in as much detail as you want to. And that is that kind of thing. And looking back at this, these details are very similar to prayer for me, right? Prayer, in my mind, having been a Christian in the past and kind of come back to it in late, later in life, I kind of realized that prayer kind of involves these things. Prayer naturally involves some gratitude. It naturally involves wishing well upon others. It naturally involves goal setting right? And so that's a, some kind of like way of journaling as well, in a way, right? If you can call it that, right? You might pray around other people, you might pray to yourself, you might pray out loud. And this is a way that you might journal. Just a, just a thought that I had when I was writing this down, I was like, okay, prayer might be that kind of thing. Religions often have certain rituals that seem to be good, for the general population and people don't know exactly why and here's my theory right prayer is somewhat like journaling so that's why it might be good i'm not sure it's just a theory of mine i thought i had when i was writing the script and so that might be a thought that you continue to have if you are religious or if you are interested in religion at all that might be a thought that is worth having right and so i came to that thought through journaling right kind of meta journaling journaling thing right journaling about journaling okay so the next part here let me see okay here's an idea okay another way of thinking about this is self-therapy Self-therapy, okay? Ooh, sorry, burped. Literally imagine yourself, you know, as a therapist, sitting down in a chair or whatever, and, you know, maybe you're lying down on that, on that kind of like classical kind of uh, therapist chair or whatever. <laughs> it looks like a torture device now. Okay, how do I make this like a sofa? Is that a sofa? Okay, imagine that's a sofa and you're lying down and you're literally giving yourself bits of advice about what you're going through, right? I sometimes literally do this. It's like a role-playing exercise and that might seem silly, okay? I know, I understand that might seem silly, but again, to remind you, no one's going to see this. No one's going to read your writing. No one's going to watch the things that you do unless you want to show them. No one's going to see it. So all this cringe, all this kind of like, you know, this is awkward, this is kind of weird. It's just for you. Remember that, okay? So sometimes I will literally go to my journal and type something out. I'm like, okay, I'm going through, you know, problem. Okay, let's just write this down somewhere here. So I'm going through this problem. I'll describe the problem and I'm like, okay, I'm struggling with this, blah, blah, blah. And I'll be like, okay. Okay, Dylan, 
So you're going through this kind of issue here, this kind of issue there. And I kind of imagine giving myself advice as if I'm someone else, right? And I'm able to kind of like give advice that, like it comes from my own brain. So I know it already, right? So I, I technically know it somewhere deep in my brain. So my pen's not working. So I technically know it deep in my brain somewhere. But right now, as I'm thinking, so this is a brain right now, right? It just, I'm just too muddled up with this, these thoughts of these problems. And it kind of screws around with my brain. And it's, my brain's a mess, right? So I, I go to my kind of like, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe this. It's, it's, it's so weird to talk about, but another version of myself, right? And it's not like a schizophrenic thing. It's, like, it's just an imagination thing, a role-playing game that you can kind of imagine yourself to be another person, right? So I go to another version of myself through journaling and I ask him, what do you think about this, right? And he kind of takes that muddled bit of my brain and kind of like unravels it and says, okay, here's what's going on. I think you should do A because of X, Y, and Z. But if that doesn't work, you can choose option B, which is second best and because of, you know, W, right? And the reason it's good is because of, you know, one, two, three, like whatever it is that you come up with, that's the solution to the problem, right? That you can come up with. And it really, really helps. I know it's kind of weird and I know it kind of like, if you've never done this before, it seems really strange to talk to yourself in a way to solve problems, but it really is genuinely helpful to do that, right? And it's kind of like, in a way, holding a mirror up to yourself and looking at who you are, right? Like I talked about that before, like journaling, some of the effort of journaling is because you discover who you are, right? Who am I? That's the big question. And that comes to those values that I talked about before. So the values, the mission, the interests, the philosophy, the religion, all these kind of really big pillars in life, you get to define who you are, right? Because a lot of people, they don't know who they are. If you ask them, okay, what are you interested in? What's your mission in life? What are your values in life? What's your philosophy about life? They don't really have an answer, right? And I can guarantee you, the people you respect in life have these nailed down. They have their values nailed down. Like the people that you look up to, let's say, you know, Bill Gates and, you know, Kobe and, you know, people that are like big sports stars and big people that find success in life. Chris Bumstead, Ronaldo, Messi. These people have a certain list of like values and a mission in life. And they have interest and a philosophy and a religion that they kind of hold to, to, to themselves, right? They might not be religious, but the rest of these apply, right? So they kind of spend a lot of time looking in the mirror and thinking about that kind of thing, about who they are, because this is a very important question. And the more you can define it, the more clarity you have in life and the more, the easier you go through life because you know exactly what to do right? Answering this question of who am I, it's like getting better and better at driving a car down a road, right? And so you can go through life with such ease because you know how to drive the car of your life. Whereas if you don't know that answer, you barely know how to drive the car. Because that's what this is. Your values, your mission, your values are how you drive the car. Your mission is your destination. Your interests is what you do along the way. Do you listen to music? Do you listen to the radio? Whatever, right? It's like that, right? So answering the question of who am I is like getting better at driving a car in that way, okay? So that's what, that's what this question's about, right? That's, that's what this kind of habit is about. Not question, sorry. So for me, 
just I'm just trying to wrap up the last thoughts I have here because there are things that I want to mention here. So through this method of journaling, I've been able to come up with these like, you know, elaborate frameworks about what I do in life right through my values my mission whatever i know a lot about myself because i journal a lot right so i know for example that when i'm a little bit stressed out or maybe like work's gotten a bit too much for me i know that a walk in nature with no technology will really help me out really make me smile make the day better similarly with any problems or anything like that I know that journaling will help. It's literally day and night difference. I literally, I'm like stressed out about something. I'm like, okay, let me just write this down. And every single time, it makes me feel better, right? And so frameworks like that, right? So I might, I come, I might come up with frameworks with, with um, I don't know, some big life thing. So maybe I might have like a, I might journal about like my ideal girl, right? So I'm single right now. So because I've written down exactly what I want in a girl, I know what I'm looking for, right? I know that, okay, I want a girl that is like this. So a girl that is, you know, we won't go into details here, X, Y, Z, you know, qualities and details, things like that. And so I know what to look for when I'm searching for a girlfriend or a wife or whatever. And when I meet people, I know what to kind of like look at and that kind of thing. And so it really gives me that framework. And, okay, there's a last point I want to talk about here. And it's seemingly unrelated, okay? It's to do with the fact that this could be anything. I talked about a variety of different things. Discovering who you are, having that kind of self-therapy kind of session, having it like a prayer kind of thing, gratitude, wishing well, that kind of stuff. Having it like a tap. And having it like various ways to start journaling. Problems, thinking things through, writing about what you want to write about. And that's the thing. It really can be anything. All of these things are just some ideas. You can just start on a piece of paper and just start with anything you want. Literally anything, right? The first thing you see, let's say I'm talking about a guitar pick, right? Because that's what I see when I just look down just now, right? Guitar pick. You know, and then you can just flow, right? You can just flow and just write anything you want to do, right? Guitar pick. You know, I started playing guitar when I was at university. I picked up this guitar that I found in my attic and I just started playing. It was a really bad guitar, by the way. It was really difficult to play. I don't even know how I started playing. And so, you know, I think it kind of contributed to me getting my first girlfriend, actually. And so, yeah, my first girlfriend at the time, I was not so good around girls, but that was a whole journey for me as well. So I can talk about that. So it really goes on this journey. So I can talk about guitar, my attic, right? And that reminds me of uh, how how hard it was, right? Right, and how I got my first girlfriend. I talk about, you know, just girls in general. And that might take me back to my experience at a boys school. And that might take me back to the friends I had when I was a boy. And that might take me back to the friends I have now. Right, you can see how this kind of, it goes in really different directions. And this is something I just made up just now. Right, you can talk about all kinds of different things. And it can go anywhere. And that, so friends now, now that starts to become like an important topic, right? And who's to say what parts are important, what parts aren't important? You discover things about yourself and you discover memories that might have been locked away for a very long time because you have this kind of flow of your mind onto a piece of paper. It's like your brain, literally, is kind of like flowing onto this piece of paper. And so you get to have this kind of unlocking of memories that you've not thought about in years right that's a keyhole by the way (laughs) 
if you can't see that. So you have this like kind of unlocking of memories that you haven't thought about in years, and it's just literally because you've opened that tap to your brain and decided to start journaling. And so you can discover things about yourself that you never knew to be true and that can change your life, right? Unlocking deep memories, unlocking, you know, things that were hidden from you, things that you didn't really see at the time. So maybe there was something that went on in your life and you're like, you know what? I think that the way I thought about it then was wrong. I think that this different perspective might be correct, right? There's memories and perspectives on that memory, the way you look at it, okay? Things change over time and you can kind of like, it kind of, it's kind of like taking your brain to the gym, right? That's an arm. <laughs> and it's a really good way to strengthen that and really pour over the memories that you had in your life and really just connect with something deeper. Because th this process is just letting go of the reins you have on your brain. The kind of like cage your brain is kind of kept in and kind of allowing your thoughts to flow from one thing to another, right? And you can just like literally talk about it, like it can go anywhere all kind of different directions and it's not as if any one direction is wrong and the other one's right they're all right right and the more you do this the better you get at finding those really good memories and the really important things to, to do and as i say with anything right this is a skill that you get better at over time so if you feel like you're bad now there will come a time where you get good right and so that is journaling right all the things i talked about there is what contributes to a habit that changes your life and the different ways to go about it and different kind of things you can do to trigger these thoughts and ideas that you can have to kind of start off your journaling process but in essence it's thinking Right, Because the unfortunate th truth is a lot of people around us don't even think these days. Right? They just go with whatever comes first. Right? Okay, it's, is this what the normal thing is to do? Go to school, go to university, get a normal job, just get a, you know, retire when I'm 60, that kind of normal path. Like the average man, I talk about this a lot, by the way, is obese, divorced, and broke, less than 1k in the bank, right? That's the average lifespan of a man. And that's because they don't think about what to do in life. And so if you don't want to think about what to do, you're destined to be average. And so you'll be this person. So do you want to aspire to be average or do you want to aspire to be a thinker and actually think about, okay, what am I going to do to es escape the average path, right? I'm going to look at my health. I'm going to look at my relationships. I'm going to look at my finances, right? And so to think literally changes the path you take in life, right? So if you start here, you could go down that path or you could go down this path, right? A or B. I don't know how else to describe it apart from life changing. Right? And you will feel it as you continue to do it over time. Right? So to conclude here, let me just check if I've written down everything that I wanted to talk, to talk about. I think I've covered everything. So, the conclusion I want to make here is that journaling is about thinking. But not just any ordinary thinking. Thinking that has... So a thought by itself is a nebulous cloud. 
thinking that has a weight attached to it. Okay? Thinking that has a weight attached to it because that grounds it in reality. Right? You're on the, on the ground level, you can look at it and see for yourself that, okay, that's a good thought. Right? And so that's the importance of journaling. And it literally, although it seems trivial, is such a life-changing habit to have. I can tell you could because I've lived it. And so there's different ways to do it. There's writing things down, there's different methods. So I'm just gonna write down the methods here. Right, if you wanna revisit those, then go back through the video and look at those. There's the methods. There's ideas. Oh, goodness, my pen isn't working today. Oh, come on, my pen's giving out on me. There's ideas about how to start journaling. Prompts you can have. Gratitude, wishing well, and, you know, thinking about problems, self-therapy, this kind of thing, right? And the final thought is why we do it. And the reason why is to discover who we are inside our values, our purpose, our philosophy, our religion, the mission we want in life, the, the interests we have. Because meandering through life blindly is like walking blindfolded through a cactus field, right? Let me just draw this out here. So we don't want to walk through this cactus field with a blindfold right it might seem easier right once we get stung a few times it's like oh I'll, I'll forget it right but if we actually look and see where the cactus is and navigate it so take a different path here and plan things out right path a path b that is what the action of journaling is like we get to avoid such pain in our lives and navigate to a place where things are better beyond the cactus field where you know there's flowers and fruit and you know food to eat and things like that navigating life is similar to that right so that's the last message i want to leave with you if you simply want to make your life a little bit less painless a little bit less painful sorry and you want to make it so that you can navigate life effectively then journaling is an effective way of doing that. Because the pain you face in life is avoidable. And the joys you experience in life can come about by design, right? And one of my favorite ways of doing that is through journaling. Because all journaling is, is a concrete way of thinking about life. With that being said, thanks for watching. I hope this helps. I can guarantee you, if you try this out in your life, it will help you. It will change your life. Bar none, okay? It definitely will. I can promise you that. So have a go at this. I hope your life changed for the better. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.